What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku. As well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Boss man, we see him right there in the background. It's our man Dante Jackson, Grandma State Tigers, fresh off the NCAA tournament win, played for Dude in Indianapolis, showed a good day, and he's with us with the boss special today. Well, Dante, what's good, my brother? Good to see you, man. What's good? What's good, my brother? How you doing today, man? Everything, everything good? It's blessings on this side. Everything's good here. Symphony in Atlanta, man. The sap is flying. The pollen's everywhere. Springtime is here, man. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Hey, pollen. The pollen definitely here in Louisiana too. <laughs> I hear that, my brother. Man, I must ask you, man. Uh, I, I, you know, I've been talking to, talk to this before, but you know, in the swag, man, you know, you got all these guaranteed games, man, and uh, take some L's you don't want to take. You know, of course, you want to win a compete, but you know, you're on the road a lot. So, how was that trying to get you, keep you a young man, and realizing we still have a good chance for a great year, fighting a tough start here, knowing we had to go out here and play these guaranteed games the way, the way we have to way to raise money for our school. Well, you know, the, the 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 tough part of it was was that well, I mean, well, the good part of it is we have some seniors that have been there, and we have some seniors that can kind of tell the younger dudes like it's okay. The tough part is, you know, the younger dudes like getting too down on themselves. And I'm like, listen, y'all, this is a tough game. You know, we got to play our best to win. But the reality of it was, I kept telling them, I kept seeing us getting better. And that was the key to everything. We just kept getting better in all the losses. You're like, man, it's like, man, it's another loss. And, you know, at times you take a 30-point a loss and you're like, man, but I could find the I could find the highlights of us losing and I could be able to show them on film, like, we're actually getting better from this game that, from this game, and then the last game. So that's all you can ask for is your guys to keep growing as a team. No doubt, my brother, like you said, man, like, you know, I've learned this been around the NBA. You gotta kind of be more process driven and results driven. Sometimes you can be doing the right things, not get the right results. I know what the Hawks here now. We, we have a lot, a lot of injuries right now, but we're playing the right way. Man, it looks look good on the record. Maybe out talented right now, but we're doing the right things, playing the right way. So talk, talk about that piece of it. Talk, trying to be more 
process driven and result driven with your team to keep their confidence up and keep them pushing to get better every day. Well, that's the thing. Uh, it, it's about the process. You know, you can't win a championship in one day. And, you know, our goal is to go one and oh. So, you know, throughout the process of going one and oh, we want to do the right things on the court each possession. And that's the thing that I had to stretch to them is like, as long as we're doing the right things, and if we get an open shot and we miss the open shot, and that's the shot we wanted. Well, I mean that, that that it was it was a successful play. Now we just got to go back and make the open shot, and that's something I can't control. And that's something that the players control. You know, I can put you in a position. You got to go make the play, and that's you know I'm a firm believer in players make plays. So you know the process is always the process, and you know sometimes we try to put the cart before the horse, but really we got to let the horse pull the cart. And it was just you know just trying to just let these dudes buy in, and the more we start seeing the results during SWAC, the more they bought into to what we were what we were preaching. No doubt, brother. Like you said, like doing the swag, you may get a heck, heck, heck of a run and getting, getting, getting guys in their roles. And like, like I know how you are about adjustments. I talk about that. You got salt, salt on the big say how good you make adjustments. And for you, man, uh, going to a game, sitting for the game, and staying poised, staying calm, and making the right adjustments, pushing the right buttons to make sure you all get the results you want at the end, end of the game. Well, I mean, I think that's coaching, man. Coaching is making adjustments. Uh... You got to find out what's working right that day. You know, you know, we 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 thrived ourselves on being a great man to man uh, team, but that didn't come around to almost the last month of the year. But we had to play a lot of zones, a lot of different, uh, you know, uh, matchup zones to kind of just get through, you know, the season. Because at times, you know, our man to man, you know, we were doing a lot of switching, and we like I, some things that we did last year we couldn't do this year. So we had to continually make adjustments on the fly with trying to get our guys in position to be their best, to be their best. And as that started happening, you know, it, 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 it kind of took off. And then even with the Montana State game, as you was alluding to, you know, we had to make some adjustments where we've had to pull out the full court press and, and you know, try to get some different stops that way. You know, we hadn't pressed a lot this year. But we had to find, find our areas to, you know, pick our spots because, you know, different moments call for different things. 100%. And, you know, for you and your mind, Brother Dante, I know you wanted to win that game at Alabama State against uh, Coach Matlock and those boys on, on their senior day, losing double overtime. How did you use that game to reset and refocus, knowing you see see them again in a few days in Birmingham again? Well, look, I was uh, I was kind of happy we lost that game to Coach Matlock. You know, it was, it was a really good game, highly intense, man. You know, Coach Matlock does a phenomenal job with his guys. Uh you know, just, you know, just a good teacher of the game, you know, coached by a lot, and they ran a lot of good stuff. And just throughout the process, you know, we go through that double overtime, and I felt like we played good enough to win, but we didn't play our best basketball. And that was basically a chance to get a wake-up call before we went into the tournament. And, you know, the tough part about it is it's hard to get these young dudes up after they already know they clinched number one seed. You know, they get the tournament trophy in Alabama. You know, you the uh, regular season champions and, you know, everybody excited. You know, the next day we got to drive down to Birmingham. We ran into traffic, stayed on the bus, a trip that was probably supposed to be. I mean, we had to go to Montgomery, a trip that's probably supposed to be a two and a half, three hour trip turned into a four hour, five hour trip because of traffic. So, you know, it's just, you know, one of those situations where, you know, guys just wasn't as focused, I felt, as they needed to be. It, it was a chance that we could reel them back in and, and really and really step on them, you know, and really just, you know, press them before that tournament came, that turn, that first tournament game. No doubt, because sometimes, you know, when those dudes get, get complacent, they, they win a lot, they, they start letting bad habits creep in, and you really can't you can jump them, but not as much as you can jump them if you lose a game and they don't take it as well up there. We, we won, coach. Just got to find little things to make it better. So, like you said, man, good and yeah, happy back. when it happens. Yeah, they'll sit back and say, Coach, tripping. No, I ain't tripping. I'm trying to keep winning. <laughs> I ain't tripping at all. But, you know, if it's a coach tripping thing, they know it is. They know it's out of love. No doubt. And you know what? You know what's cool about this, man? How, how did it feel for you? You know, Texas Southern's been your bucket for the past two years. And this year, you can clip the championship game. We know Coach John Jones does a heck of a job over at Texas Southern, but this year, you know, you had a hell of a team. Second, 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 second 20 win season. And do it, Graham at the helm. And getting that job done the bar to arena, man. How cool is it to win over those guys, of all people? You know, uh, it's funny because uh, my coaches, we were going back and forth about 
who everybody wanted to play, and I told them I want to play Texas Southern. That to be the best, you got to beat the best. And, you know, Coach Jones is, you know, phenomenal, man. Coach Jones, his staff, man, a lot of respect for them, a lot of love for them. And just on the simple fact that, you know, wherever we at, you know, whether it's recruiting, out and about, at Final Four, whatever the case, coaching social, and we we kind of all hang out together, you know, with the Texas Southern guys. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough situation playing them and beating them and just the respect level I have for Coach Jones. And, you know, the funny part, my uncle, a uh, little story, my uncle kind of got on me a little bit, uh, my uncle like my dad. And he like, man, you respect Coach Jones too much. You go in the game and you almost looking up to him instead of instead of being like he one of your opponents and you 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 ain't you ain't making him fear y'all. And I was like, oh, okay, I gotta get on my stuff this year. So, you know, it was just one of them things that I had to, you know, I still look at Coach Jones as a legend in this game, but then I also got to look at him as the opponent. And that's kind of how it was this year. You know, they came in, clipped us at Grambling. We got a chance to clip them uh at TSU and I knew exactly what the game was going to be when we met up at Bartow Arena. And that's, you know, that's what we wanted. You know, to be the king, you got to beat the king. So it is what it is. No doubt, man. No doubt. And also, brother, like like in Dayton, man, I know it's an area you know very, very well. So how cool was it to get Grambling's first NCAA tournament win in Dayton in that environment and seeing, like you were talking earlier, seeing your team come back, being down 14 to get it done that fast? And, you know, it's – it, it was great, man. Shout out to my uh, Centralians that showed up to the game for a lot of support with that HBCU pride. Uh, you know, I'm a Central State graduate, man, and I had a lot of friends and a lot of uh, just alums show up to that game just to support us, man. And it was just great to hear when we making a run, the crowd cheering, and they they on our side, man, because I've been in Dayton Arena where the crowd cheering and they ain't cheering for you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great to actually have the crowd on your side being in the arena, so. Man, I was just ecstatic, man, just being at, you know, day like a second home. So being at, you know, I say like being at home, man, and having all your family, your friends coming up to that game and supporting, man, it was just incredible, man. It's just incredible for us to get it, you know, with Grambling, you know, in the backyard that I started my career. No doubt, man. And also, you you just heard Jamil go to the lineup, man. Uh, he's a testament to staying ready, man, because, you know, he, he went ahead and played the first half, man. So about that example right there of a young man, Staying ready, staying prepared, not sucking, understand his role when he's called upon, perform the big, biggest lights ever, and helped you all win that game. Well, I tell him that's that's how life go. Uh, you know, you got to be able to meet the moment. And, you know, in life, you know, a lot of times, you know, we don't meet the moment because we in our own way, you know, in our feelings. And I tell people the worst place for a man to be is in his feelings. So you got to make sure that, you doing what it would it take to, to be prepared to meet the moment and Kofer, man, just he's really a big time talent, to be honest with you. And a lot, you know, it's just tough because you know, Dozier got off to a good start scoring the ball. Him and Dozier play the same position. And then we got a fifth year senior that know everything that we actually do and can help make adjustments on the court. You know, you playing behind a fifth year senior at times. And then it was like even in that situation, I was thought about going with the senior, but you know, I thought to myself, no, nah, this is a Kofor moment, man. Kofor been preparing, you know, even in practice, he's been doing that in practice. So it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a coincidence. I, I knew exactly what was going to happen. And then I went to kid four, got his third and fourth foul. He wasn't trying to guard. And I'm like, Jamel might be one of our best downhill drivers. Well, heck, we going to, hey, he keep trying to guard Kofor. We going to keep running at him. Like, it is what it is. Like, you, you don't want to foul and you want to stay in the game. We're going to do our part. We, hey, we going to try to get you out the game. And, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to Ford because he, man, he put on a big time performance the way he played in that in that in that first four game. No doubt. And you get got a call from Vice President Harris, man. Did you see that coming when you got a call from her, man, and have her talk talk to your team at the hotel there? No, I didn't see it coming. Uh, you know, it was kind of one of those surprise moments, and I wish I'd have known because I felt like I'd have been a little bit more prepared for it. <laughs> It was like, man, I'm talking to VP Harris, like, man, Madam Vice President, this is this is a whole situation, man. It it it, it just felt good, man, because it just lets lets you know all the hard work that you've been putting in have been acknowledged, and it's been acknowledged from the highest of highs, you know, in in, in our country. No doubt, and what's good, man? Even see basketball is on the rise, in my opinion, but Don say, hey, look, can 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 this team put us out of the game with a three? Say compete against their opponent, Wagner, man. Talk about HC basketball and how it's on the rise and how 
you know, close to the level between HBCU teams and the other teams in the country here. It's not what people think it is. I mean, the toughest thing is, is that, like, you know, we have a lot of great coaches uh, throughout HBCU. Uh, you know, Coach Blakeney over at Howard, like you talked about, uh, Coach Jones at Texas Southern, uh, several great coaches in our league and several great coaches in the MEAC and even on down to, you know, uh, you know, Division Two level. There's a lot of good HBCU coaches. The thing of it is, is that if you compare us to loaded mid-majors, I think we're right there. You know, there's not a day that I think that we couldn't go on an even court and compete at a high level. You know, the, the biggest difference is when you get to high majors and you get to the, you know, I would say the Power Six Conference where, you know, they're putting a lot more money into their program than, than we actually put into our program. But the more, I think the more people realize that it is beneficial for HBCU basketball to be really good because there's a lot of perks of making that NCAA tournament for all our schools. I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I think we'll be able to keep growing and making these making these uh, other programs. I think we'll really keep growing and catch these other programs. No doubt. No one, doubt. For you, one for you, brother, like for you, man, back to back 21 seasons, man, at Grambling, normally time talk about you have to play that tough schedule in the beginning of the year to amass 20 wins on the back end. So talk about that for you but personally and your staff and your players who saw your vision and believe in your vision. Really, the credit go to, uh, you know, my staff and my players, man, like, and, you know, our training staff, uh, keeping them guys healthy. You know, that that's where the credit go to because, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I got the vision. You know, I instill it or whatever every day. But then, you know, our coaches, you know, they, they do a great job of, you know, preparing our guys, you know, keeping up with the vision, helping taking the vision to another level. And then our players just buying into the process and, I mean, I want to say it might be back-to-back 20-win -back seasons for the first time, might be in, like, you know, in a Division One history. So, you know, since we've been at Grambling, we made a lot of Division One history. And just, uh, man, you know, and, and, and it's funny to say that because I'm, I'm at Grambling, a school with so much history, just when it comes to athletics. And to say that we make a history, you know, it's kind of humbling, man, and you just want to stay, stay in your lane and stay out the way and, and just keep your head down and keep working. So, Definitely proud of what we're doing in a program we built, and I know we can take it to another level. You know, I remember we, so we talked about it. it was at Lake Point, man, this past summer. We talked about how, you know, you, he's going to be looking forward to this year, man, and look what happened, man. We talked about that in July. Now look at it. Now, <laughs> come with yeah, yeah. March, man. It really came to fruition, brother. Hey, listen, man, like, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer, and you got to speak it into existence. You know, you got to walk. You got to walk it, you know, and you got to live it, and – you know, you got to breathe it. So it ain't no day that, that we had off this year. We were in that we were in that gym grinding from August, well, I would say July, all the way until, you know, March 20th when we when we lost. And that's a long season. And But at the end of the day, I knew we had the potential to be here. And I knew we had a very, very sour taste in our mouth from losing to Texas Southern in the championship game last year. You know, we had beat them twice last year, if I'm not mistaken, and then we lose in the championship game. I know our I know our seniors was real salty about that. So we wanted to come back and make sure this season ended the right way for us. Well, brother, it's always good to have you on the show, my brother. And I'll see you soon, man. Final four, man. And keep doing your thing, my brother. I'm happy for you, man. I'm glad we got to see on the national stage about you, man. We are we all know about you on this show, but man, people I see who we really are and how real you are as a person, man. How players love playing for you, my brother. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, man. Until next time. All right, but I'll see you soon, my guy. Hello, my brother. All right. BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. 
Bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the king out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.